So this is my little station where I've done most of the recording. Um, important things, obviously I need my headphones all the time to hear the mix, so that's just plugged in down here. Uh, these two microphones here, this is a, a KM86, a, no, a vintage kind of Neumann thing, a 70s one, and an AKG414. And these two are what I use for recording acoustic guitar. So they sit here most of the time because once we find the sweet spot for the microphones in front of the guitar, we want to leave them pretty much the, the whole session they've been set up. Um, down here is the kind of the, the pedal mess. And uh, one of the things in this band that I'm, I'm going for is kind of interesting sound. So the reason I don't have like a set pedal board is because I'm changing pedals in and out all the time, changing the order of them and really experimenting with that stuff. So um, although having a pedal board's you know, a set pedal board is really convenient if you're going on tour. For me, for recording, I'd much rather just have a mess of stuff and, um, you know, be able to change it up as much as I like. Um, the little amp in I've got down here is a Fender Super Champ, which is an old 80s thing designed by Paul Revere. A fantastic kind of uh, session amplifier because it sounds really good at a low volume. It doesn't have to be really loud. Um, and uh, going into that, the, the, the kind of the backwards chain, uh, I've got here a Big Trees by The Audio Kitchen, which I only got just before this, uh, this session, and it's a fantastic little amplifier. And uh, it also works as a pedal, so I'm using it as a pedal to get distortion, uh, but it drives as well. You'll see there's this uh, grey cable here. This goes off into a junction box over there, which feeds a, a, right over on the other side of the building. There's another live room uh, where there's a Dr. Z212 uh, ca speaker cabinet. So uh, often when I'm recording, that pedal is feeding the amplifier, uh, sorry, is the amplifier for that speaker box in the other room, as well as running the line out into the super champ. So I've actually got two amplifiers running at the same time. They've got, both got slightly different tonal characteristics, the Dr. Z, because it's a bigger cabinet, has a lot more kind of bottom end thing going on. So um, we've got that as well. I've got a DI box over here as well that, that's plugged in. So the, the normal kind of a chain that I've got going on is, the guitar goes into a volume pedal, first of all, which is just sitting down here. I use a lot of kind of volume swells. And it's going from there into a tuner. And then it goes through, usually on the, the, the kind of the first pedal board here is kind of the, the tones kind of pedals, like distortions and that kind of stuff. Um, it goes through whatever I've got set up over here. And then it goes into the, the second little pedal board, which is more kind of delay effects. So uh, on that one, I've got the Strymon Blue Sky, uh, the Strymon El Capistan, the Strymon Timeline, those three pedals are the, the three that I probably use the most. Uh, I've got the Eventide H9 uh, and a Ditto Looper as well. And it's that, those ones are the kind of the mainstay, I guess, of my board. They're, I'm using those ones a whole lot. And then it goes out of there into the big trees and then divide it into those two different amps. So I thought I'd give you a little taste of uh, some of the sounds and how I'm getting them from uh, stuff that I've been doing on the record. So uh, I use the volume pedal a, a lot without any effects on. It's just really nice to get this kind of swell. But you can hear it kind of sounds a little dry like that. So I, I do tend to use this with uh, delay and, and reverb. Uh, the Strymon, I really love the Strymon, the, the, the reverb of it. So it's, it's pretty subtle at the moment. You can just hear a little tail on. Uh, but I've got a set little favorite thing in here which turns it into a cavern. So you get this huge swell out of it. So as soon as you, you get into the, doing the volume swells with that sort of sound. You can hear that you can bring the swell in and the note stays around for a bit. But still, I, I tend to like a little bit more going on than that still. And one of the tricks that I use all the time Actually, I'll turn that off for a second. I use two different delays at the same time. So this particular one is the, the Kappa Stan. Ooh, need the down. So you can hear it's got quite a few repeats. So I'm using that one. And then also the Timeline, which is a lot longer delays. And when I put the two of them together, the first one is go, it's going through the capital stand first. So the short delay is going into the long delays, and there's long delays on all the short delays. You end up with this kind of slightly rhythmic thing. And I really like the, the combination of that with the blue sky. When you get into doing the swells, gives you a really sweet...
love that effect. It's something that I use quite a lot. Um, works with a bit of distortion as well, so I'm just kicking in the ODR1, uh, which is a fantastic, it's definitely the best value distortion pedal. I think it's like 30 euros or something, you know, so very cheap for a distortion pedal, and it gives you that. So now you've just got that little bit of crunch going. sweet little idea it's still kind of a pretty clean sound but uh, putting the ODR one just gives you that little bit of a uh, crunch when you put the, the volume pedal right down um, definitely don't want all that much uh, reverb and delay on all the time um, one of the other pedals that I used quite a lot on this record that I really love is the dynamic wah which is a boss pedal um, so it's, it's essentially a wah-wah pedal, but it, it, it's kind of interactive in that the harder you play, the, the more kind of wah sound you get. So uh, if you're just playing softly, it gives you a little kind of rounded wah. But when you play hard, so it's really, you know, it reacts to your picking. And I, I quite like the idea of, you know, just doing... This kind of rhythmic thing of, of the, the when you pick harder, it kind of barks out a bit. Bit of distortion again. It's a really interesting little uh, pedal. It's something that I've used quite a lot. So one of the other tools that I use quite a lot that I think is a really interesting sound, some of you might not have seen it before, is this thing called an Ebo. It's a little plastic thing uh, with some sort of magnetic field in it that uh, when you turn it on it vibrates the string indefinitely so that you don't have to pick. And uh, so there's two different settings on it but if I just turn it on, you rest it on the strings and the middle string gets vibrated as soon as I play a note. So I'm not holding a note down but as soon as I do... It'll just keep the note going forever. It's a really interesting effect. I'm most commonly using it with slide. So uh, once I'm holding a note down. It's a really, really interesting uh, little device, particularly for stuff like the end choruses where you want the, this little high squealy thing going all the time. Picking gives a little bit too much of a percussive attack, but uh, using the Ebo, particularly Ebo and slide combination is uh, one of my little favorite tricks. So another one of the pedals that I really like is this Electro Harmonics Micro Pog, which gives you an octave above or an octave below the note that you're playing. So uh, sometimes I might use just the octave below and you get this kind of a uh, doubled effect so that no effect, put it on. So kind of a bassy kind of a thing. Uh, or I quite often use it with just a little bit of the bass and I turn the octave up. And that gives you a bit more... It tends to sound a little bit synthy. Again, uh, it can be quite nice with all of my funny delay stuff on. synth-like and I quite like the effects pedals that make that kind of uh, you know slightly synthesized guitar sound. Another pedal that I got just before I started this session which I absolutely love is the Electro Harmonics Freeze pedal which basically takes whatever you're playing at that given instant and plays it continuously so if I play a chord and then hold the pedal down If 
my foot off and the sound finishes. So that's a really interesting pedal that I've been having a bit of fun with on the, so far. And the last pedal I'm going to show you today, I've got a bunch of other pedals here, but uh, I particularly like this one. It's just really good fun. It's, it's like a noise generating pedal. Uh, it's not probably going to be one that uh, lives permanently on my pedal board. Uh, it's called the Red Panda and it's by Particle Pedals. And uh, the particular setting I've found here is it's like a set, sounds to me like some sort of spaceship arrival or something, you know. <laughs> thing that I've ever heard. Um, not very useful but really good for just like little sound effects within a track so there's lots of the, this pedal all over the album where it's just like a little noise or a little just kind of little things that you can find a, a kind of interesting things to go under a, you know as a kind of a bed for a sound. Now obviously that's just a bit of a taster really of my effects pedals because I bought a whole lot down and I've been changing them in and out uh, all through the session but they're the pedals that I've probably used the most. Um, so I really hope you enjoy that and uh, go and check out the Weekend of Strangers album. I uh, don't know what it's going to be called yet, album three. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it and uh, I'll see you for plenty more guitar lessons and stuff very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye bye.